Hi everyone, um, welcome to MD706, Clinical Immunology and Microbial Pathology. This is the introduction session. Um, it's also an assessment launch, uh, particularly for assessment one. I'm going to talk more about assessment two later. Um, so there's going to be a bit of information about assessment one in this talk as well. There's also going to be um, general information about the module. So again, just a bit of a module introduction, just to make sure you know where everything is, what's expected of you for the module, um, what the purpose of the module is, all these general kind of things. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this session. OK, so what I have on the right is essentially a screenshot of the module descriptor. Um, now, if you're not aware already, the module descriptor is just a really concise document that you can find through Moodle that summarizes um, the key um, information you need to know about the module. So all of the really key um, important fundamental information, not necessarily academic information, more technical information um, that is relevant to the module. So here we have um, the module content, the aims, the learning outcomes. Um, I'd really encourage you to pay attention to this as we're going to talk about a little bit later. There's also some little bits of information about the assessment on the module descriptor as well. So I'd really encourage you to take a look at this at the start of the module. Make sure you understand um, this kind of technical information around the module and it'll just help prepare you a little bit as we move in. Uh, again, really, really useful uh, documents. Uh, it provides a list of content that we'll go through on the module. This content isn't absolute, it's indicative, but and what we mean by that is it's an idea of some of the things we will be learning on the module. Um, not the exact things, but examples of things, the types of things we'll be talking about in the module. Um, from the module title, you can probably understand that the t purpose of the module will be to explore um, these two areas really, clinical immunology and microbial pathology. Um, and that's the overall um, topic of the module, but you can look in a bit more detail at the module content, the learning outcomes. These are really important as well. Now, some context for these learning outcomes. Uh, these are what you should have achieved by the end of the module. And these are what we are assessing in the assessments. So for the learning outcomes, we say this is what you should have achieved at the end of the module. Um, so it's really important that you understand these. It's really important that you read these because, again, this is useful information for the assessment because this is what we're assessing. We're assessing whether you've achieved these learning outcomes fundamentally. So as you're completing the assessments, it's useful for you to look at those learning outcomes and to know them and to understand them. OK, again, these outcomes are what we are assessing. So as we'll talk about for this module, we have two different assessments. There is firstly an oral presentation and there is secondly a literature review. And what we are doing with these assessments is assessing whether or not you've met these learning outcomes. We're making sure that these learning outcomes have been fulfilled. OK, as I said, the module is essentially um, this can be split into these two halves in terms of topics. Now, they're together in one module because they're really strongly overlapping, um, but we can split them in two um, just for the sake of this discussion. So we can think about clinical immunology and we can also think about microbial pathology. Now, I'm sure you will have all done some microbiology and immunology in the past, likely as part of your undergraduate degree, and you'll therefore probably understand that when we're talking about immunology and microbiology, um, and really for this module, the portion of microbiology we're thinking about is infectious disease. So when we're thinking about immunology and infectious disease, we're thinking about two concepts that are very, very tightly linked and they're almost um, opposite sides of the same coin. If you want to understand immunology, you really need to understand infectious disease. And if you want to understand infectious disease, you really need to understand immunology. Now, the reason for this is because infectious disease is caused by microorganisms. Um, it's caused by infections of microorganisms. So microorganisms will infect us and cause infectious disease. These microorganisms do this 
in the context of the immune system, right? So if we think about evolutionary speaking, um, our immune system and microorganisms have evolved alongside each other. That's why these two things are really, really tightly linked. And that's why it completely makes sense to think about immunology and infectious disease together. And that's what we're going to be doing in this module. So again, we're going to be thinking about clinical immunology, and we're also going to be thinking about microbial um, the microbial pathogenesis, microbial pathology, so the way microorganisms can cause disease in humans. And as we've said, the type of disease that microorganisms cause is infectious disease. Something else we'll look at in the module is establishing this fundamental concept. So the idea that you, we essentially have two different types of disease, right? We have non-communicable disease, so non-infectious disease. This is disease like um, diabetes, um, genetic disorders, most cancers. So these are diseases that can't be passed from person to person, they're non-communicable. And the other type of disease we have um, are the infectious diseases. Uh, these are also called transmissible diseases or communicable diseases. And the idea of these diseases is they can be passed from person to person or person environment to person. And the reason these diseases can be passed from person to person um, or person environment to person is they are caused by microorganisms. They are caused by infections of the host by microorganisms. And these microorganisms can move from host to host to host, sometimes via the, the environment, um, but they can spread throughout a population essentially. And this is why we have infectious disease. And that's what we're going to talk about in that portion of the module, because we need to understand how these microorganisms are able to infect a host, how they're able to cause disease, how they're able to spread through a population. And crucially, we need to understand what we can do about it. Right. So these are really, really important aspects that we really need to understand. Um, and this is the um, microbial pathology portion of the module and the cl clinical immunology portion of the module. Obviously, this is hugely important too. We have this really, really complex um, immune system, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect by a long shot. And we can get a lot of diseases caused by the immune system. So if we get immune system dysfunction, we can get um, disease resulting from that happens all the time. I'm sure you can think of some examples off the top of your head. Um, if we're thinking about infectious disease, then if we have a situation where the immune system isn't able to fight off infectious disease, then we can get disease in that case. So we get a microorganism causing disease in a host. In a, an ideal situation for the host, the host's immune system will be able to fight off disease. It will be able to resist the disease and prevent infection. But obviously, this doesn't always happen. Obviously, people get diseases. They contract infectious diseases even when they have a functioning immune system. So um, relevant to that, we can think about the question, how does this happen? How do microorganisms infect despite the immune system? So again, infectious disease and immunology really, really tightly linked and just some of the kind of things we're going to think about on this module. So up on the slide now, I have the um, timetable for the module, or at least I have the timetable for the first day of the module. In the first day, we'll be looking specifically at uh, microbial pathology. So we'll be looking at the ability of microorganisms, <coughs> excuse me, we'll be looking at the ability of microorganisms to cause disease. Um, the most logical way for us to do that is to work through the groups of microorganism one by one. Now, in this respect, microbiology is a really, really logical subject. We can progress through the different groups of microorganisms. We can look specifically at how that group causes disease. We can look at how we diagnose that disease, how we treat that disease, how we prevent that disease. We can look at all the different elements of infectious disease that we want to understand for that particular group. Then we can move on to the next group and do that. And what you'll hopefully see is there are significant differences between groups, but there are also significant similarities. So one thing we'll be looking at is diagnosis. And what you'll see is a lot of the time, regardless of the group of microorganism we're talking about, diagnosis involves collecting a specimen. So collecting a sample and then testing that sample, whether that testing is culture, 
um, whether it's an antibody test, whether it's an antigen test, whether it's a PCR, um, this is the kind of thing we can do to diagnose. So a lot of the time it does involve collecting a specimen, so collecting a sample. Um, and those tests I mentioned, culture, serological tests, um, antigen tests, uh, PCR, um, all these kind of things that we're going to talk about, these aren't restricted to a single group either. So these are the tests that we can use to diagnose infectious disease. And what we'll do is see how they're applied to each of these specific groups. And again, huge amount of overlap. A lot of the tests we use for bacterial diseases are also used for viral diseases and for fungi and for helminths, so the parasitic worms, and for protozoa as well. So again, the purpose of structuring the day like this is so that we're working through the groups we're looking at the similarities and we're also looking at the differences because there are differences. There are really fundamental differences and it's important we understand those as well. Um, if we want to think about differences, um, if we lean towards treatment, so we think about treatment, straight away we can think about bacteria and we think about viruses and we can say antibiotics are therapeutic interventions that work against bacteria. They can target bacterial infections but antibiotics will not um, be efficacious against viral infections. And similarly, we have antivirals. So antivirals are drug-based interventions that are um, efficacious at inhibiting viral infection, but they're not efficacious um, in the context of bacterial infections. They don't do anything to treat bacterial infections. And what we need to do is understand why, is really understand why in some level of depth and a lot of this day will be establishing some foundational knowledge that some of you will have, some of you won't have. And then we will be pushing that way further as we progress throughout the day. So it is going to be a really intense day. As you can see, there's a lot of teaching there, uh, but there really has to be. There really has to be because, again, we need to get that foundation there make sure we understand the key bits of information and then we also need to push that further. Um, so it should be a really, really useful day. Uh, one of the most useful aspects is it, of it is how comprehensive it is. So we'll be talking about all these different groups of microorganisms and these are the main groups of microorganisms that cause infectious disease. Um, there's some other minor groups but we'll even touch on them, we'll acknowledge them, we'll have a very quick discussion um, but these are the, really the very main groups of microorganisms that cause infectious disease. The bacteria, um, obviously we know what bacteria are, same for viruses, um, same for fungi, um, helminths, when we're talking about helminths, we're talking about parasitic worms um, and protozoa. Um, when we're talking about protozoa, we're talking about single-celled eukaryotes that cause some really important human infectious diseases. Um, so again, we're going to work through these groups. We're going to understand the technical differences and also the similarities. And we're going to explore um, some elements of uh, microbial pathology for each of these groups. I'm going to talk a little bit about diagnosis, about treatment, about prevention, about pathogenesis, about transmission. So all these really, really important things we need to understand. Um, you'll notice the first session is asynchronous, obviously, because that's the session we're in now. Um, there's asynchronous sessions marked throughout the module. And all asynchronous means is that you can watch it in your own time. So. An asynchronous session is recorded and put on the module space. It will always be put up before the time that is indicated on the module. So obviously the session um, that is marked as introduction and assessment launch, this is put up on the Monday, um, not on the Tuesday when the module starts. Um, so if you want to watch it a little bit in advance, that's absolutely fine. Um, the other sessions, however, there's times by these and you are required to be present in the Teams channel, um, listening, hopefully engaging and taking part. Um, these sessions will be recorded as well and you're absolutely free to go back and watch the recording anytime. However, it's not a sufficient replacement um, for the experience of being in the lecture from your side. So the information will be exactly the same. Um, but in terms of the module engagement, we want you to feel part of the module. So we do strongly encourage you to attend each of the synchronous sessions, synchronous sessions um, 
live so you're there to ask any questions i'm always super happy to ask any questions as we're going through always super happy to have a discussion about anything um, but obviously you need to be present in the lecture for that to take part um, so again we really do want um, live participation in the live sessions um, for the asynchronous sessions um, you'll see there's more asynchronous sessions in day two and day three uh, there's a there's a reason for these asynchronous sessions and um, the main reason from my perspective is I think a full day nine to five of sitting in front of your computer is not um, it's not a beneficial learning environment should we say that's not a great way for you to take on information um, so this first day is the most day you'll spend in front of the computer listening to me talk really um, and then the second and third day we have more asynchronous sessions and other things um, again just because I understand listening to me lecture through the um, th you know through teams even when you're partic participating and asking questions so there is back and forth it's still quite intense um, and I don't want three full days of that I think for day one this is absolutely fine I think we'll make it through a day and there's a huge amount of information for me to deliver in this first day and I think this is the most effective way to do it but if we look at day two and three you can see we do have more asynchronous sessions and I just think this works it means you can access the information as and when you want it gives you a little bit more freedom um, and again it just makes um, hopefully your experience on the module a bit more um, or I should say a little bit less intense again I don't think there's much benefit in me asking you to come to live sessions for the three full days when um, a bit of a mix a bit of a blend is um, just as good really okay so for this second day we're talking specifically about clinical immunology now there's an assumption here there's an assumption that you've done some immunology at undergrad and you understand the key aspects of the immune system so so I'm sure that is the case you're on a master's course now um, so we are kind of jumping in at the master's level sometimes it's just the way master's courses work um, we have Kate Harrison here and Hannah Hamdala who are going to talk to you about um, some different aspects of clinical immunology um, we also have a couple of lectures from me so I'm going to talk about oncogenic viruses so there's a bit of an overlap between clinical um, immunology and microbial pathology and I'm also going to talk about inflammation and therapeutics now this is another area where there's overlap because we've talked about the intricacies and the interplay between the immune system and um, infectious disease one of the implications of this overlap is that we can actually treat infectious disease by targeting the immune system um, and that's something we're going to talk about in that lecture we're going to talk about inflammation and how we can actually target inflammation in various ways therapeutically so we can target inflammation in a way that helps us to intervene in infectious disease this final session here is an asynchronous assessment support session what this is fundamentally going to be is a now long video in which I'm talking through uh, the assessment really important that you engage with this um, just so important uh, every year and across all modules um, there are submissions made and it's really unfortunate to see that there's a small minority of students each year that don't seem to have engaged fully with the support materials um, it, it's just a shame because the information is there um, and I really really encourage you to engage with it because you're really making life very very difficult for yourself if you don't um, again the information is there to help you um, I want you to do well on these assessments I really do want you to do well that's why I'm putting the information there to help you um, if you're not accessing the information um, you, you know you, you, you're setting yourself back you're making life difficult for yourself so this ass assessment support session will be uploaded and will be available for you to watch um, and there'll also be a lot of other information on the module space um, but this is a really core um, support session again the purpose of this session is to directly provide support so to make sure one you know what's expected of you for the assessment so you know what you need to do and two you need to know how to do it well because those are two different things right so one you need to actually understand the technical aspect of the assessments and understand you know 
what you're being asked to do and two you need to understand how to do well at the assessment how to uh, how to excel how to do more than the bare minimum because obviously you're at master's level now um and even at undergrad but especially so at master's level um we see students are very very motivated and students want to do well as they should um so this is information you really want Okay, now day three. Um, again, my thoughts with day three are I want as much engagement as possible. I don't want too much of didactic learning, so too much of me talking and you listening. And I think by day three, uh, we'll have probably reached a point where it's appropriate for more um, interaction. It's appropriate for more self-directed learning. Um, so I've turned day three into a case study and I've done this case study before just in a different context. Um, I think it should be really interesting. I think you'll enjoy it. Essentially, the purpose is um, one, to get your engagement. Um, so get you to actually be engaging with materials and doing things rather than just listening to me. Um, again, I think there is value in listening to a lecture because I'm going to be giving you so much information that's really, really useful. But at the same time, I want you to actually be actively putting that information into practice. I want you to be actively doing things, solving problems, figuring things out, looking at the literature. And that's the purpose of day three. So you're going to be applying the knowledge you've learned in day one and day two. And further than that, you're going to be looking at the literature. You're going to be going online. You're going to be looking at textbooks as well. You're going to be exploring the topic um, yourself. Again, this is self-directed learning and the way I'm pushing you to do this is through a case study. Now I'm going to launch the case study in another asynchronous session. So it's going to be another hour long session. All these asynchronous sessions are one hour long. Um, and yeah, in that one hour session, I'll basically tell you what the case study is. I'll give you some information about the case study things like model data, epidemiological data. And then what I'll ask you to do is to go away and complete the case study in the afternoon. So to do your research, to do reading, look up the information I've given you, look for some context for it, and then see if you can make any sense of the case study. This isn't assessed, it's just an exercise. But um, the skills you'll be putting into place for this particularly looking at the literature, um, particularly looking in textbooks, particularly interpreting the information that's being put forward in the module. These are the same skills you need for the assessments for this module. So again, this is going to be really, really useful. There's two live lectures as well in the morning. And these live lectures are aspects of um, microbial pathogenesis and clinical immunology and they're delivered in a way that is in the context of the case study so they're designed to help you through the case study but it's also important information for the module as a whole so i'm just using the case study as a vector to get this information to you really um, and in those sessions we'll be talking about diagnosis and treatment and also epidemiology so really important aspects um, that we do need to understand um, this is where they'll be delivered you'll see there's two self-study sessions um, after lunch and then another one at three o'clock. Um, so self-study, this is essentially an opportunity for you to go away and complete the study and look at the materials and make sure you understand the module content in the context of the case study. Um, um, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense for me to give you a case study if I don't give you the time you need to complete it. Um, obviously, this is such an intense module. I need to build that time into the um, into the uh, timetable, and that's what I've done here. So between one and two and three and four is when I'd like you to work in the case study. Obviously, between 12 and one and two and three, I've marked this as lunch and a break just to make sure you do have opportunity to eat. Obviously, it's absolutely up to you when you take a, take your lunch and when you take a break with self-study. Um, I, I think it just makes sense to have them on the timetable anyway. And then at the end of the day, we're finishing up, which is essentially just a close for the case study. So I'm going to spend an hour, just a live session in which I um, talk through the case study. I give closing information. I answer some of the questions that you may have and I also answer some of the questions um, that I've asked you about the case study. So really, we're going to solve the case study um, together there. 
in terms of that session i also want to talk about assessment one and two a little bit um i'm not gonna be giving out a huge amount of information in that session because you'll have already had the information at that point but what i will be doing is providing you with the opportunity to ask questions so this is the last taught session on the module um, as we've been going through the three days if you have any questions about the assessments that haven't been answered if there's any information you feel like you need that you haven't been given um, then this is the time for you to bring it up this is the time for you to ask me um, obviously there's other support sessions earlier on where you could potentially ask um, and you can always ask these questions in live lectures but this final support session um, particularly because it's a live support session so I'll be there um, I'll be there live and we'll be interacting I'd encourage you if you do have any leftover questions if it comes to the end of the module and you're unsure about anything about the assessments this is your opportunity to ask obviously I'm happy to answer any questions about the module in general um, but the assessments are so fundamentally important um, to your progression and to your master's course then I understand that will likely be the focus here. If we come out of this third day and you think of more questions you have, um, I'm absolutely happy to answer these on email at any time. Um, so if you think of any questions, um, if you just want anything to be elaborated, um, just shoot me an email. Be really, really happy to chat. I'm also happy to have a Teams call if you find that's bit of an easier way to communicate some students do that's absolutely fine we can just schedule it in what I don't want is students finishing the module and then going and to get on with their work they found out they don't actually know what to do for this so they don't know what expected of them um, maybe you weren't quite paying attention when I said that specific bit of information which is absolutely fine we all kind of lose attention sometimes right um, I don't want you to have lost that information forever. I want you to be able to come to me and ask me. So please uh, definitely feel free to do that. You're not bothering me. It's part of my job and I'm happy to do it. So here's just a bit of information about the teaching staff you'll be meeting on MD706. I'm Dr. Christopher Jones. I'm a lecturer in biomedical science. I'm the module lead for this module so any issues with the module at all please feel free to contact me and i'll be happy to help you out um, if i can um, i'm also the program lead for bsc microbiology and i lead quite a lot of undergraduate modules um, if you came through any of the chester medical school undergraduate programs you probably recognize me uh, Kate Harrison, so Dr. Kate Harrison, she's a lecturer in immunology. She's delivered some asynchronous sessions for us. Uh, Dr. Hannah D. Hamdala, lecturer in biomedical science, and Dr. Claire Lucas, lecturer in hematology. Um, Dr. Claire Lucas has recorded some sessions that aren't um, built into the timetable, but I think they will be useful for some students. So I've put them up on the module space. Um, Claire's kindly agreed for me to do that. So if you want to watch those sessions, that th they're really useful. Again, they weren't. I wasn't able to build them into the timetable itself, but I've still put them on the module space. So you're free to engage with them if you want to, and I'd really encourage you to if you think they're interesting. Okay, so. What we've talked about so far is the module content and the timetable. So again, I know this is a lot of technical information. Um, this is why it's an, you know, an asynchronous session, so you can go through this as and when you want to. Um, it is important information, so it is information you need. Um, this next ses ses section, assessments, um, this is particularly important, really, um, just in the terms of the outcome of the module from your perspective. Um, obviously I know you want to do as well in the module as you can and the way we measure that is we have two assessments so what I want to do now is introduce specifically assessment one um, and talk a little bit about that okay so assessment one is the oral presentation now the module is split into two assessments so the assessment for the module is split into two we have the oral presentation and we also have a written coursework assignment the written coursework assignment is a literature review that I'll talk about at length at a later point. The first assessment, so assessment one, is an oral presentation that I want to talk about. 
now. So for the oral presentation, you're essentially being asked to compose a poster. Um, and under normal conditions, this poster would be presented in a face-to-face -face session. Obviously, we won't be able to do that this year. What we're doing it instead is having a poster submission with an audio component. So you're being asked to create a poster. And as well as creating that poster, you're being asked to record yourself presenting the poster. So discussing the poster and that recording should be present on the poster as a clickable interactive element that the markers can listen to. Um, so you're going to have a lot more information than this about the uh, oral presentation assessment. However, what I have here is the assessment brief, which is the key information that you need. So it's the um, it's a concise summary of the assessment. That is the bare minimum that you need to understand to do the assessment. So everyone should be reading this document straight away. It's on the module space, hugely useful. Um, again, it's the fundamental information you need. It's the key things you need to do for the assessment. Um, as part of this assessment brief, there's also a fairly extensive FAQ. So what I tend to do with my assessments, um, and this might be a bit new, um, I have an FAQ as part of the brief, so frequently asked questions. And the reason why I do this is students will often email me with questions about the assessment, and that's great. As I said, always happy to answer these questions. However, when I answer the question, I don't want just that student to have the answer. I want the whole cohort to have the answer, just so everything's fair, just in case other students are thinking about asking the same question, um, but they haven't got around to it, or something like that. So if you email me with a question, what I do is I anonymously add that question to the frequently asked questions list in the brief and I put the answer underneath, um, which I think is really useful. So it also means if you do have questions about the assessment, you're welcome to check the FAQ before you email me because the answer may already be there. And if it is already there, you can see the answer straight away rather than waiting for me to reply, which can probably take a day or two. We tend to save 48 hours for academic emails um, just because I'm receiving a lot of emails and sometimes I have a full timetable and things like that. So again, I'd encourage you to access this brief, make sure you understand the brief, have a quick read through the FAQ. There's a lot of questions there that I've already got from um, previous years. I've led this module for a few years now, um, so I'd encourage you to engage with that. Regarding the assessment brief itself, hopefully the information here makes it crystal clear what I'm asking you to do for the assessment. So I'll read this out. You are required to produce a poster discussing A, the pathogenesis of a single infectious disease and B, relevant therapeutic interventions. The poster should be critical, particularly when discussing therapeutic interventions. The poster should contain an audio component in which you present the poster. This audio component should not not exceed seven minutes in length. It's expected you will identify and discuss emerging, developing therapies, as well as therapies currently in use. Again, this is a really, really clear, really concise summary of the assessment, telling exactly what you need to do. You're required to produce a poster discussing the pathogenesis of a single infectious disease and relevant therapeutic interventions. This is assessment one. Um, there'll be a lot more information uploaded as part of the module on how to put a poster together. You'll be delivered a lot of information on um, things like uh, pathogenesis, on things like therapeutic interventions, on things like epidemiology. So the information that we want on the poster. So the information that you need to understand to be able to compose the poster. But what you actually need to do is summarise here. And then as we're going through the module, we'll give you the skills you need um, to actually do that. OK, so that's the end of the assessments portion of the talk. Again, I just wanted to briefly introduce the assessments. Assessment one, all presentation, which we just talked about. Assessment two is literature review, which we'll talk about in more detail um, later in the module. What I want to do now is talk a little bit about the support that's available for you on the module.
so the medical school really provides layers of support so support in a range of different forms and which layer of support you access uh, really depends upon the particular situation you're in so it depends upon um, the type of circumstance you want support with right so what I want to do quickly is let you know some of the different types of support available to you um, just so you can be really informed and you can feel like you know who to go to with a specific issue so for module issues so module level questions um, or concerns um, the best person to go to is the module lead usually um, so if you're working through the content for a lecture and you don't really understand it um, or you have a specific question or you have a specific question about the assessment um, or if there's an issue with attendance you, any of for a specific session or for a specific day these are module level concerns right and the best person to go to is the module lead because they'll be the best person to answer your questions um, in terms of MD 706 that's me obviously I know the assessments better than anyone else because I set them obviously I know the module content myself um, better than anyone else because I created the module so again I'd encourage you to come to me with that if we're talking about specific lecture level concerns um, and you usually hear what I'm talking about is just you don't understand something specific in a particular lecture that wasn't delivered by the module lead then the best person to go to is the person who delivered that lecture so we have these lecture level concerns you can go to the lecture and then if you have these more module level concerns then you can go to the module lead uh, we also have a program lead so each student should have a lead of their program which you should be aware of and you should know who it is um, if you have program level concerns then the best person to go to is your program lead so again any issue that kind of extends beyond the module obviously I'm super happy to try and help out in any circumstances it's just if it's a problem that extends beyond the module then it might not be something I'll be able to help with and your program lead would probably be better placed to provide you with support your personal academic tutor is also a really useful point of support so your personal academic tutor is um, assigned as your personal academic tutor for the express purpose of providing you with support providing you with advice and the great thing about this role is there's no limitations on what you can go to the part about um, you can talk about anything that's impacting your ability to study uh, we understand that a lot of issues students can face are not necessarily academic um, so for example bereavement or illness um, all these other really complicated things that unfortunately can happen while students are studying uh, we understand these things happen and the pur purpose of the personal academic tutor is for you to have someone to go to to talk about these things again they're not academic issues but they are impacting your ability to study so they are really really important and we have um, procedures in place uh, to provide you with support but to provide that support we, we need to be informed so if you find yourself in a situation where there are issues that are potentially impacting your ability to study we'd encourage you to go to your PAT as soon as possible um, on a related thing um, we need to think about disability and inclusion so if you are in a situation where you have a health condition that may impact your ability to study again uh, one thing we can do is put an inclusion plan in place and an inclusion plan is just a strategy that we use to try and level the playing field so to make sure if you are um, impacted by a specific health issue and that health issue is impacting your ability to study we provide you with specific support that helps you um, not be restricted by that particular issue if that makes sense um, I'm being really general here because it is a really general policy because when we're talking about health issues that can impact ability to study uh, we can talk about dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, physical disabilities um, just three examples um, there are things we can do to support you it, it, it's worth having that discussion it's worth having that discussion and the person you have that discussion with is the pat is your pat so if you think you maybe do have health issues that are impacting your ability to study and encourage you to talk to your pat because um, then we can discuss about 
disability and inclusion plans um, and we can talk about potentially putting an inclusion plan together and again the purpose of the inclusion plan is to make sure you have any support that we can reasonably offer um, to help um, to help make sure you're not restricted in your ability to study really there's two emails here there's Elise Island and there's Elizabeth Mason Whitehead so Elise Island is the deputy head of school um, Elizabeth Mason Whitehead is the head of school um, they're both really really approachable um, they're both really happy to speak to students um, so if for some reason you feel like you do want to speak to the deputy head of school or the head of school um, I've put their emails there okay outside departments so we also have these university level support um, uh, what would you call them uh, support programs I guess um, the, they're basically portions of the uni university that are specifically put in place to provide support to students in specific areas so student welfares student futures um, we have counseling as well we have chaplaincy in the university these are all areas that you could explore if you do feel like you need some support and another purpose of the PAT is to direct you to this support. So if you are finding like you're in a, you're in a situation where you need support, um, these resources are available and your PAT can direct you towards them. I know it can be a little bit intimidating. You don't know who to email and you don't know what to say in the email and it's just a little bit confusing. Um, but if you speak to your PAT, um, one thing your PAT can do is help you access these resources and they can be really, really useful. Um, your peers as well so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one because you're not seeing each other uh, face to face um, but when there are opportunities to interact with your peers on modules and outside modules um, you know we, we do encourage you to do that um, some modules will have things like group work and we really encourage you to do that um, just because it can be really useful to connect with your peers there's some more support here. So LIS, library team, uh, student skills development. Um, LIS, this is really useful if you have any technical issues. And obviously this year, technical issues can be really um, devastating to your ability to study. So if you do have any technical issues, I'd encourage you to contact LIS. Um, Moodle, so on the module space, there's a huge amount of resources on each module. Um, even if you just look at the module descriptor, you can see there's a reading list, so a recommended reading list. This is going to be really, really useful. Um, on the module space itself, if you look at the learning materials, you see there's lecture slides. Um, obviously, these are really, really useful. And under the assessments tab for this module, that's where I'm posting all the information relevant to the assessment. Um, please, again, make sure you've read all this. It's so important for the assessments that you actually access this material. Um, and self-directed learning, student-directed learning. Uh, your level seven students now, it's a master's course. Uh, I'm fully confident you have the ability to access the literature yourself. So I've put up the recommended reading list, but this recommended reading list is just to start. Similarly, you have the lecture slides and you have all the lectures that will be delivered, but these lectures are just to start. Um, not all the information you need is in the lectures, not all the information you need is in the recommended reading. Um, it's the information you need to get started, it's good information, it's in-depth, in places, but there's no way we can provide a comprehensive, complete coverage of clinical immunology and microbial pathology. It's just not going to happen. No module is capable of doing that. And what we can do is provide you with the skills you need, provide you with the information you need that will enable you to then progress into the topic even further yourself, to look at the literature, um, to look at the primary and secondary research papers. And this is what you're going to be doing for your assessments. A lot of the information on your assessments will be from primary papers, will be from secondary papers, almost all of it really. Um, you're not going to be using the information from the lecture slides to put your assessments together. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the skills and the knowledge you've taken from the lectures and then you're going to be applying that to the primary literature. You're going to be using those skills to search the primary literature, to search review papers, um, to search medical textbooks and this is going to enable you to do well on the assessments. So again, 
really really important point at level seven what we definitely don't want for assessments is information from lecture slides to be given back to us we don't even want that at level six so at third year of undergraduate we've moved beyond that um, it's a lot about self-directed learning it's about your ability to access research papers and the reason you'll be able to do that and the reason you'll be able to understand those literature um, those research papers and interpret the results and discuss them is because of the information and the skills you've understood and developed from the taught sessions. And again, these are the key references. You'll see these in the module descriptor. They're just a start. The purpose of these references is to guide you towards the literature. It's a jumping off point that will enable you to delve deeper and deeper into the literature. I mean, I fully understand that the literature um, can be really really complicated and it can be even quite intimidating when you see how many papers have been published and the purpose of this reference list the purpose of this recommended reading is again to guide you into the literature to provide you with some accessible points that you can access and then push further and further and really expand your knowledge okay so thank you everyone for your time hope you found the session useful again an introduction to the module, an introduction to some of the key bits of information, a bit of an introduction to the assessments, but obviously later as you progress into the module, we'll be discussing these assessments a lot more and there'll be um, specific support available for each of the two assessments. But hopefully now you um, understand the purpose, purpose of the module, you understand some context for the module um, and you understand what's expected of you as part of the module. Um, so thanks for listening and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the lectures. Thank you.